Hello guys and welcome. In the last episode we created a Grey Dwarf farm which produces unlimited amounts of wood, stone and resin. Well we're going to be putting the wood and stone to good use today with a chicken breeder and this is a pretty special breeder. Um, I haven't checked this one out yet as this is the new and improved one. But the, the basis for what we've been doing is based along the logic here. And we have a breeder that produces eggs for us. And if we go around here, you'll also notice that it provides us with chicken and feathers without us having to do any butchering ourselves. This was developed first by a patron of ours, a fantastic supporter of the channel, Mr. James Irwin. And today we, we're going to improve on the system that he's developed and create an easy to follow guide for you to build this uh, so that not only you can breed chickens, but also arrange an automatic farm for producing eggs, and your feathers and chicken breast. So let's get into it. If you're wondering how to get eggs to start off with, the first thing that you need to do is defeat Yagaluth. Once you defeat him, you can return to Holdor here. And from here, you'll see that the egg is now available. Now this costs a lot. It's 1,500 gold per egg, and you're going to want to have two to create your first pair to produce those eggs. This build is going to consist of three parts. The first one is producing the breeder, which you can see here. The second is the shoot, and I will mention we've only just built this, which is why there isn't many eggs available there. And then the chick breeder, which will produce the chicken and feathers for us. We don't want chicks to die because they have a reduced amount of chance of producing feathers or chicken for us. Whereas if you have a fully grown chicken, it guarantees two feathers and a chicken breast each time. With that in mind, let's get started. We'll build a new one over here. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is smooth out the ground. We are using dev commands for this build simply because it's going to take me a lot of time and it's already three in the morning and I'm going to have an unhappy wife if I'm not careful. But we're going to start off by building a stone pillar all the way to 16 meters high. Once done, you're going to want to place a stone in the center. And on top of that, you're going to place a fire pit. This is what's going to warm the chickens so that they can warm the eggs so that they can hatch into chicks. When roofing it, I will mention that I have decided to do it on one side to give it some protection from the rain, but also to make sure that the smoke escapes the build rather than going up into the hatchery area. So we're just going to cover this on all sides and you will want to occasionally refill this. Next up, we're going to place core wood supports uh, pillars, which will go all the way up. And we do actually want these to go one higher. And what this will do is support where the hatchery is going to be. Once you've placed the support uh, core logs down, you're going to place a wooden platform, which is going to be four across of these large wooden floors and then two wide. You can actually change this as you want, but this is to do a replica to that. At this point, we're going to want to grab a single wooden beam. And we're going to do this on the center and we're going to go around each side. And then we're going to grab these wooden floors. Now it's actually really important that you use these uh, as I found that some, for some reason when you use larger um, flooring, the chickens tend to get out. Same with the roofing, but we'll get to that in a moment. We're going to do this on either side. And at this point we will place a wooden wall the half wooden walls on the back, the single wooden walls. And then from here, we're going to need to get some eggs. Thankfully, I have some just down there. So we've now started throwing our eggs in. You can see we've got two in there, they'll be fine. To do this, hold down the right mouse button. This allows your character to turn to where you're facing. You're going to want to be two of the large wooden floors away from it. And we're just going to throw one at a time. Oh. That was a fail. 
Now, if we go over to them now, they're going to come up as too cold. Now, that's because they're not covered. So we now want to grab a thatched roof and hopefully they will start to warm up. However, this doesn't always happen. You see, this one's warm, this one's too cold. And I think this is because this one's too close to the edge. And so what you need to do with this one is just place a thatched roof corner like so. Whilst we're waiting for the eggs to warm up, I do want to mention if you are playing Valheim, uh, do consider playing on a dedicated server. It's fantastic to play with friends. It means that you can all play at whatever time is available for you. For example, I'm in Mexico right now. My friends play over in the UK. And so having a dedicated server means that we don't necessarily all have to be on the server all at the same time. We can pick and choose what time's best for us. And it also offloads a lot of the computation. So for our bigger builds, we don't have so much trouble when it comes to loading it all in. The great thing about this is also because we are partnered with Load.ms, if you do choose to get a dedicated server for yourself and your friends, you can get 20% off your first month with the link in the description below and using the code Total Eclipse at checkout. We've been with them for over a year now and I haven't had a single problem and highly recommend using them. But with that, I think the egg are done so let's give them a quick look all four of the eggs are now warm the next thing that we're going to want to do is grab a small wall and we're going to place this in front I'm also going to place a beam just on top because sometimes I find that the chicks jump out and I find that between this wall and the beam it tends to stop them. We're going to have to wait a day or two for the chicks to hatch. And we're back and at this point we have at least one chick there. I think we still got an egg to go. We need to wait for the chicks to... Hmm, that doesn't look like there's another egg in there. It's a bit finicky, but if we remove this, that's going to run out. So I think it might be that one chick got out. Uh, if we see one... Ah, there you go, that's it. That's the chicken. Okay, so with that, we're going to throw another egg in and hopefully this time, this one will hatch. But while we wait for these chicks to become hens, which will take another two days, we're going to have a look at the system that's used to create an automated slaughter system, I guess. There's no nice way of putting it. So this system is quite simple. We have excess eggs or eggs from the second section come down to here where they also hatch and become chicks and then chickens. We want the chickens to be the ones that we slaughter, as I mentioned, because they have more um, feathers and chicken on them, unlike chicks. And what happens is once this fills up fully with chickens and can't handle any more, the chickens start to overflow onto the staircase and chickens like to climb stairs. So when they have that option, they will head up, but they will come to here where they will start taking smoke damage and die. We can probably encourage that now by lifting up the floor slightly. So if I just grab this, there you go. Okay, so now they're moving and they're going to start pushing themselves into the fire. He says, but we do need to wait for this to fill up. And here you can see the system in play. Let's just let those chickens go up. There you go. One's gone in and it's going to die. We didn't push that one. And you can see that one's pushing that one in. And so we're just going to let it do its job. Unfortunately, this needs to be full. And because this was my first rendition, I didn't plan this through that well. However, we're going to make this a lot more efficient on the other one. So a couple of days later, we now have four chicken waiting to be fed. So for this, I've found that the easiest food to feed them in terms of getting it to actually stay in the right position is the carrot seeds. And you want to throw these at the wall so they land right next to it. You'll know if it's um, in range or not because you have hungry chicken here and one, there you go, that's just eaten one, that one's happy. We're going to have to do the same for all the other ones up here as well. We now need to sort out 
the two sections where the eggs are going to come. They're going to be forced out the back wall here, the, the lower section. So what I've decided to do is to create a chute that will take the eggs to two separate areas. The first one will lead far away from the fire. We'll, we'll do it on this one. We'll bring it out to about here. Now, if you look by the rested buff in the top right, you'll see that in this section, this is where the fire is touching the floor. Any eggs in this section that are covered by a roof will start to hatch. So you, we want to have the chute run the eggs down to about here. To do that, we're going to place of course, I'm not high enough for this. So now that we're up here, we can now place this wall. And thankfully, because we've placed the single beam just there, it's gonna make it really easy for us to place these like a chute there. We're just going to bring that down. And then at this point, we can place some beams into the wall to support this. And I'm going to place this 45 degree roof all the way down here. And at this point, we will have the eggs run down into this section. And here we have our chute. Some eggs will get caught on the last few sections, but don't worry too much about that. And I've just added a little lip so it doesn't go any further. And we've now automated eggs. The next thing that we need to do is have another chute that will bring the eggs down to an area where they can feel fire. We already have the eggs falling here, which could work really well for us, but I'd prefer to have it closer to this section as we will use the wall to trap the chickens in so that they're going to the slaughter area. At this point, we're going to flatten the, the ground. I will quickly jump up to this section up here to build the initial chute. And then we will work on a system for slaughtering them. Okay, so we brought the chute down a fair amount. We want to go a little bit further. And then from here, we're going to go one down. There we go, perfectly. Um, I definitely didn't organize that. But now that that's done, we're going to seal this in. This is where our eggs are going to land. And you can see that these are already warm. But if we want to improve the chances of these being... Um, hatched we can place a roof just over the top here and we're going to seal this area and one thing to bear in mind though is that hens have a habit of climbing upwards so you may want to uh, give yourselves a high wall in between and all we're going to do here in fact we will keep this open and we will use the iron grates here just so that we can see what's happening. But at this point, we will have a staircase. In fact, we can do it from, from the get-go here, should we wish. And this will reduce the amount of time that it takes for the chickens to, to crawl up here. The only thing to bear in mind with this small amount of space is that chicks will start crawling up straight away. So you may need to place some kind of barrier initially um, to stop them. You're going to want to expand this and then we will have a drop. And the intention is that the chickens will fall into this brazier and instantly die so that we can grab meat and the feathers. So the last thing to do here is to seal this in and to add a doorway so that we can get to the brazier. And you can obviously pretty this up as much as you want. If you are finding this helpful, guys, do hit the thumbs up. And obviously, if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And I have just started a new Let's Play series for the Mistlands. We're at our third episode, and the fourth one's going to feature a pretty cool dock design. Do check that out. I'll put a link to that video in the cards above now. Once you've covered that over, you'll see that the smoke is getting caught in there. And actually, we should have a little space there so that they don't die up here. But this should mean that any chicks that hatch and turn to chickens will then be pushed over into this area where we will have our chicken and feathers and our eggs here. So the last thing that we need to do at this point, other than maybe have a way of getting up there, which we could do with maybe doing a, I don't know, a walkway up this side, like so, would be to have a little storage area. It doesn't need to be anything complicated. Uh, we will just house this in. 
and then just add your storage. The last thing to do would be to add yourselves a way of getting up to the top that might be using a teleport, which we're going to do here, or you may want to use a staircase of some description. At this point, all we need to do is wait for those chicks to hatch so that we can start seeing how effective that is. And uh, well, you can already see the, <laughs> the egg nest down there is doing pretty well. One thing I should mention here, having placed these down, is that the smoke is coming into here. You do not want that. So if necessary, do add an extra roof tile there just so that the smoke doesn't come and kill your chickens. That's, that's pretty important. And you can seal this in as you prefer. So we have some of the eggs hatched. Um, there is a slight problem. We have the chicks jumping straight into the fire, which we obviously don't want. So I'm going to have to lift this section up so that they're not so quick to get across. We want them to be chickens. So I suppose we could do it from this side if we're a little bit ingenious. Okay, let's leave them a little bit longer and see how they get on. And here we are. The proof here is in the pudding. So hopefully this will show off what we've produced. I have changed this slightly. We added a roof here because they kept getting out and some of the eggs here weren't hatching. So I thought that was a good choice. And we actually closed this all in. Um, something which I wasn't going to do, but the chicks kept spawning on top of the hens. And so the chicks were heading towards there. So what we've added are uh, some shutters and I'm sure you could do this with a door as well but let's oh <laughs> let's catch uh, or pick up all of these eggs and see how many we've got and then we'll open up the <laughs> did you enjoy yourself there chicken we will then check how many or how well the the slaughterhouse works and we can do this by just popping over here and then opening up the wood shutters and hopefully that will encourage them to all start going through there now if i just give them a bit of time <laughs> would you look at that it's working perfectly just need a few more to hop on through come on hen just give you a bit of encouragement there <laughs> Unfortunately, they, they don't always want to walk up the stairs. So they need encouragement from the others. Now that we've got these wooden shutters down, we don't need that uh, little beam across the bottom, which should encourage a few more to go up. Um, I'm just going to wait here a little bit and uh, we'll uh, just go on up. Go on. You can see why this would be perfect as a passive spawning um, breeder. Ah, that's what we need. And we'll we'll leave them to do their their thing. Oh, actually. If they're so enthusiastic, we might we might as well grab these as well. Oh! Would you look at maybe we need to leave the door open to encourage them to try and leave. Anyway, how many have we got? We have a total of 50 eggs from this little hatcher uh, hatchery over here, the little nest. We have 137 feathers in total and what, that's 93 chicken. Uh, just leaving this on passively. That is not bad at all. But guys, we are going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did like this video, please do hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me build next as a little guide for you. I remember seeing one about a drug farm. So perhaps we'll do that next time. But guys, special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Clips patrons, James L. Erwin, Fireflesh, Treble, and Beowulf, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity Ben, Star, Shoku, the MN Wolf, and that dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Adam the Useless. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.